everyone, welcome to a new video. Today what I wanted to do was share with you some art supplies that I've been using in my art practice lately and really loving. So some of these supplies you will have seen in previous videos. I've done a few unboxing and art hauls, but in this video I want to show you how I am using them. So this video is going to be packed with painting demos, there's some jelly plate printing, collage, working on big abstract canvases, all sorts. So let's get straight into it. So the first supply that I want to talk about is this golden pastel ground. So this is an acrylic medium that you can apply onto any substrate and it will give it a nice toothy surface. So this is great if you have a surface that has become quite glossy and it's difficult if you want to add pastel or pencil marks over the top. So sometimes I find when I'm using acrylic paints, particularly um, the more shiny ones, when I go to use a pencil and I want to get some like nice marks on the canvas, they just don't really show up very well. There's nothing for the pigment to grip to. So that's where something like a pastel ground or you can use clear gesso. Clear gesso does a very similar thing and you apply it to the surface, let it dry and you'll be amazed at how grippy it is and how vibrant your marks or your drawings will look. So with that in mind, I'm going to open this up and spread it over the surface, pop it out in the sun, it won't take very long to dry and then I'll show you. So this particular product is quite thick so what I like to do is thin it down with a little bit of water and use a brush. I've been using these um, distress collage brushes to apply mediums as well so um, these are really great for any kind of medium. I use them with gel medium but also products like this. So what I'll be doing is taking some of this and just popping it on a palette here and you can see how thick it is and then I'll just mix a little bit of water into it just so that it's a good consistency for spreading. So when I put this on it's going to look a little bit scary because it does look like it's quite translucent so it does give a sort of hazy appearance but it does dry a lot clearer so um, you don't need to be too alarmed as it goes on because it will dry clear. So I'll just spread that out. This is something that you could also use in a sketchbook which would stop your pages from being super sticky so they stick together and give it a nice sort of rough surface so you can use it on any kind of substrate. So I will leave that and pop it aside and let it dry. So since I have quite a bit of this product left on the brush I'm going to pop over to the canvas that I have on my easel which I'm working on and just put this on a section of it so that I can then apply some of the pencil and pastel marks on the canvas as well on the big one. The good thing about it having that haze is that you can see where you've put it when you're applying it. So you can get a nice even layer. I know I've put it in this brown section at the bottom of the canvas so I'll come back once it's dry and have a look at it. So I'm just going to give this a rinse now in the sink because any kind of medium, whether it's gel medium or pastel ground, can really get into the bristles of your brushes and then it will dry very stiff. So I'm gonna give that a good rinse. So you might have seen on the big canvas that I'm working on that there are some collage papers in there and what I have been doing is jelly printing onto deli paper and I love deli paper because it's very thin. And I actually ordered some because in Australia it's kind of hard to find deli paper and I ordered this from a local company here where I live in Adelaide, Natalie May Scrapbooking and I wanted to see whether it was different to some of the other papers that I've been using. So I've been absolutely loving it for creating collage papers 
And it's a very similar to what we call in Australia grease proof paper. Uh, so if you can't get your hands on deli paper, maybe have a look at that. You can usually find that in the supermarket. Um, but it is really nice to work on. So because I have been doing quite a bit of printing, I also thought that it might be nice to have a smaller jelly plate. So some of you will have seen that I have a really big jelly plate, but sometimes you just want to work on a small piece of paper, such as the one in front of me. So I bought another jelly plate. I'll bring it in so you can see. And this is a really nice workable size. So you can see here that this is the gel press brand and it's eight by 10 inches. So if you were just getting started with printing, this would be a really good size to sort of try it out and see whether you like the process. And I'm still very much learning when it comes to printing. I haven't done a lot of research. I've basically just been feeling my way through the process. I probably do need to uh, fine tune a few aspects, but for the way that I'm using the prints, which is in a very abstract way, I'm incorporating them into my acrylic paintings, layering other things. It really doesn't matter. I can just go for it and have fun and, and learn as I go. So I'll put that aside, bring out the actual gelatinous sort of jelly feeling uh, plate pop it down on this cardboard I have in the background, it's just protecting the table. This is our, our old kitchen table actually. So I have this here and what I wanted to do was just do a few more botanical prints that I can then use later on when I get up and do a bit of work on one of my other paintings that I've started. So you can see a few that I started the other day um, that are here. And for these, I was actually using open acrylics. I wanted to sort of test that out, but they do take a little bit longer to dry. So I'm going to go back today to just using ordinary fluid acrylic um, and add a few more layers and do a few more prints. And that brings me to another supply that I wanted to mention. And that is these little plastic bottles. Now I ordered these from Amazon a while back and I fill them with custom mixes of colors that I enjoy working with. And that makes it easy for me if I want a particular color for a print, I can quickly you know, lay, lay that color down and get exactly what I'm looking for. And I don't have to spend as much time mixing colors or remembering how to create a color. So I mixed up these bottles at the beginning of the year. And what I use is fluid acrylic. And sometimes I will add a little bit of water if the paint is a bit thick, or I might add a little bit of slow drying medium as well, just to help keep everything nice and loose so that the bottles don't clog. But having said that, I was just checking these out and these are all flowing really well still. And they have been in here for almost a year. So. I'm really happy with how this system of pre-mixing colors or fluid colors in these bottles has been working. <clears throat> so with that in mind, I'm going to just mix up one more color just so you can see that process of creating a mix and then storing it uh, for later. And I use these for all sorts of applications of painting. I use them on my big canvases as well as when I am doing printing and collage work. So I use these uh, golden fluid acrylics to mix up the color that I'm looking for. I'll just add a bit. I won't fill it up too much because they are a bit big. I wouldn't mind some that are a bit smaller because you go through a lot of paint in one of these. So this one I'm using some golden Titan buff and I am going to add a bit of burnt sienna and some Payne's Grey. This might end up being a bit of a mystery color. Might look like I know what I'm doing, but I can't quite remember what the mixture is for this. Give it a shake and see what it's looking like. They do take quite a while to mix. So get some 
arm muscles from shaking them up and down. So I've changed up the brayer that I've been using as well. So I now have a Speedball brand and it's a nice soft brayer. So it's been working really well. And because I do a lot of botanical prints, there's always like little bits of uh, plant and tree on my jelly plate just adds to the texture. That's what I That's what I say So sometimes I just like to start with printing um, a plain color to give a background to work on So these paper sheets that I ordered are a really nice size for this size of jelly plate So we'll come back to that one in a minute. I also have a little scrap piece of paper. This was a tip that a few people gave me was just to use that um, to get rid of any excess paint that's on your brayer as you are working. So that's a pretty cool idea. And then you can use that as collage paper too. So. So one of the themes that I'm exploring in my current work is using plants from the garden here in the studio, but in particular Australian native plants and gum nuts and gum leaves and things like that. So I have these little seed pods here. I recently painted a whole painting that was based on seeds and the cycle of life, seed cycles and things. And I really enjoyed having that thread or something that I was inspired by even though it was a very abstract painting and that's something that I have been enjoying in my process so I wanted to bring in even more of that inspiration into some other larger paintings that I'm working on. So I'm going to lay down these seed pods and see what kind of print I can get. So I'll come back over the top so I have this piece here that has the solid colour. I will roughly try and match it up and then I will need to press all this down. It, these seed pods are quite chunky, so it's gonna require me to sort of really try and push in the gaps, but I'm not looking for a perfect print. I'm just looking for an interesting pattern that can be quite abstract. Um, and you know, with printing, it's always a surprise. You never really know what you're going to get. I think I've seen people sort of use something like this to sort of, or a lid or something like that to help press things down. It's a pretty lumpy print. <laughs> okay, so let's see what it does. So we've got a pretty cool abstract pattern there and then we've got a, this nice pattern that's left on the plate. So I'll try and pull a bit of that as well. I'll pop that onto one of these ones here. So I'm going to give the plate a bit of a clean with a baby wipe and then I'll do another gum leaf one uh, with some gum leaves this time. So baby wipes are really handy for cleaning your plate if you want to change colours and go back to having a completely clean slate. So you can just rub everything off with the baby wipe.
Okay. Okay, so I'm going to press these uh, seed pods in. This time I'll remove them and I'm going to make a pattern. So I'm using the seed pod to remove some of the paint off of the plate. So I have this nice orangey, orange and green mixed background. It's pretty subtle, but you can see the, the patterns. So I've just placed the gum leaves and a few little sprigs here and I'm going to pop this piece down now. So you can see here all the prints that I've made in this particular session and I tried out a few different techniques using the seed pods and these eucalyptus leaves. So you can see how you can get really nice abstract patterns and I actually love like all the creases and all the sort of detail in the background. So here you have one with the eucalyptus leaves and you can see the lovely veins in the leaves and you've got a little bit of the seed pod um, pattern in the background. I like to work with quite a few layers so that you do get interesting combinations. I also did a few where I just 
use the end of my paintbrush. As long as you're not using something too sharp, you can always etch into the paint or use a, a Q-tip or something like that in order to get nice patterns. I was trying to get patterns that resemble reeds and twigs and things like that with this one. This is a ghost print. It's very subtle, but it's actually very pretty. I'm not sure if it'll show up very well. So this one has a very delicate pattern on it. You can see it better when you hold it up. Um, but yeah, it's got some lovely um, subtle colorways in it. I actually love the pattern on this, the combination of the seed pods and then the drawing that I did has created a really interesting, interesting effect. And then we just have some more really simple prints with the eucalyptus leaves, just using different layers there. So another supply that I wanted to share with you is I purchased these scissors because I didn't have any really nice scissors to use for collage work. So all of these supplies I will link in the description. So these are the Tim Holtz Tonic Studios scissors and I have them in a few different sizes. I have a medium one as well. Uh, so these are really great for cutting up collage pieces into different kinds of shapes. So one of the things that I've been doing is just cutting up my collage um, into just various different shapes. And then I put them into my canvas paintings. And some of them I will just keep as full prints because I am working on quite big canvases at the moment, so it's nice to have bigger sections. So the ones that I particularly like, I might just cut out the whole print ready so it's ready to use as a bigger section. So now I have some collage pieces ready to go. So I'm going to come back now to this canvas. So this actually feels like sandpaper to touch. It is super, super grippy. If you come over the top of it with any kind of color, let's have a look at what color pencils I have here. So you're going to see now just how easy it is to apply any kind of color pencil or pastel and for it to be really, really vibrant. So this is really just for, your, for you to see um, how using a product like that really opens up the possibilities of mixed media on, acrylic, on an acrylic based surface. So once you've applied the medium, you can then use pencils. I'm using the Derwent Color Soft pencils, but you could also use soft pastels or anything like that. Once it's on there, you will want to add a fixative just to hold that pigment in place before adding other mixed media supplies. So now what I want to do is head over to my easel and demonstrate a few more supplies with you and really just loosen up and have some fun on the canvas. So this section where I applied the pastel medium is now dry. So I've come on over here. I have a Derwent Colorsoft pencil in light sand and it's going to make it really easy if I want to add some mark making onto that section using a pencil. So you can see here in this bottom corner where the pastel medium has dried that I've just come in and added some pencil marks. I'm using a Derwent Colorsoft pencil. This is a light sand color and I'm just picking up some marks that are already in the canvas but I'm doing them with colored pencil which can be quite hard to do on an acrylic surface when it's really shiny. So that pastel medium is really allowing me to create those kind of marks. And it's another contrast with the other marks that are on this particular canvas. With my big canvas work at the moment, I'm really focusing on staying loose and staying 
unattached to the outcome. So coming in and just applying things without worrying too much about what is already there on the surface and just really being in an, an experimental phase of the process for longer because naturally I quite like to try and plan and resolve things and so this is a little bit of a challenge. It goes against my personality but I believe that it does produce really interesting results and it's a, a way of enjoying the creative process for longer and not getting into your head so much. So really feeling your way through and staying curious and trying new things. And that can be hard to do if you start to like things on the canvas. So I'm really just trying to treat the canvas as a new slate almost every time I come in. So with that being said, I'm going to pop another canvas that I've been working on on the easel and continue to add different things in that really loose way. And I will say that it's probably going to get worse before it gets better. So there are stages of the process where you might like one layer, then you add a few things and you don't like it so much and you just got to keep going and keep on pushing through because usually after that there'll be another layer that will be excellent. So it's a layering process which is a little bit different from how I work with watercolour and things like that but acrylic really gives you that freedom and so every time I come to the easel and I know I'm working with acrylic and mixed media I know that I have total freedom to change up the direction of the painting at any point so really there is no such thing as a bad layer um, it's just something that you can then build on later and might turn into a brilliant layer. So with that mindset, you can stay really um, in a fun and creative place. So let's pop the other canvas on and we'll work through some techniques and I'll share a few more supplies that I've been using lately that have been bringing this fun energy into the way that I work. So one thing I will mention is that I have fallen deeply in love with working on an easel. So this is an H-frame easel, it's super sturdy. I love that I can adjust the height, so I'll do that in a minute because this canvas is a little bit low. I love that I can flip it and work horizontally. And I've also really been enjoying using the stool when I want to get down to a corner or I just want to paint in a more uh, meditative, slow way. Then I sit on my stool and I paint and it's just, it's just really lovely. So it's interesting because when I first moved into this studio, I was seriously considering moving the sink and setting up the wall behind me as a painting wall. But with the easel, I can look out on the garden, I can really get into a comfortable position. And I will say, I don't think that the painting wall is going to happen. I love having the sink there and I also really enjoy using that wall to display my experimental canvases. And the experimental canvases, so these are the little 12 inch by 12 inch canvases I shared in a recent video, have helped me to develop this looser approach to working on my large canvases. So everything is just feeding into each other. So all the things are helping me become more relaxed and more inspired. So yes, that's what I wanted to say about the easel, loving it. Let's just adjust this canvas now so that it's at a better height. Um, there's a little lever underneath here that allows you to just push things up. There we go. Okay, you can see here that I have a little, uh, little tray that I can pop things on. I was wondering where my braille was before, but anyway, yeah, I have some stencils here and things that I like to use. So even that is quite fun to have. So this isn't a new supply. I've been using Posca paint pens probably since I first started making art, but I did come across this really nice set, which is earth toned. So it has lovely, quite natural colors in it. And it's a PC5M is the type of nib that it has. So it's a little bit thicker than what I often use, which is, perfect for a bigger substrate. I haven't used Posca paint pens on canvases very much. I've mostly used them on paper pieces, but lately I've been enjoying adding mark making in using Posca paint pens and finding that that can be quite a fun and enjoyable way to work. So let me just see what I have here in here. 
In fact, this is another supply that I have been putting just into the tray. Um, I actually put them back in the box for your benefit, but I have been just letting them sit here and using them in my paintings. So I'm just thinking about a color that will show up on here. So yeah, I have been just coming in and actually using the pens to make shapes and patterns in the paintings. And it's just a really quick way of adding some impact. And if you think about it, these pens are just acrylic paint in a pen format. So it's, a, it's just an easy way of getting paint onto the canvas and great for more intricate designs because something like this would take a little bit more um, time with a paintbrush to get it just nice. But you can just use your paint pen to build up a pattern. And this is actually an example of something where I might use my stool and lower this down a bit, sit on my stool and then just spend some time putting in a pattern on the page. So you can really add in shapes easily on the canvas with pen. And I also just feel like it's a, a different kind of feeling to using paint and a great thing to do if you don't want to get messy. You just want to pop into your art space and just add something to your canvas quickly and easily. And so what I've been doing is adding in patterns and sometimes even solid shapes onto the uh, canvas and filling them in. And depending on what kind of colors you like working with, Posca has all sorts of different colors. So you can go really vibrant, but it's nice to have this earth tone set. And if you remember what I said about just staying unattached, you know, at this point you can start to feel like, oh, I liked the painting better before I added these marks. But this is just building up energy and interest in the canvas that you can then calm down later on, but it will still add to it. And that's what I've been finding. I've, I'm enjoying working more with uh, more richly layered pieces. And I actually like the kind of scratchy colouring in type effect that you get with markers and sometimes I don't even try and colour in the areas uh, really perfectly because I quite like that scratchy sort of coloured in look. So because it is an acrylic paint based product I can actually add a wet brush over the top and you'll see that it turns into paint and that can be a way of softening some of these marks as well. So another fun supply for getting marks down and building up that interest in the early stages of a painting, which this is, it only really has one layer of paint on it. These are the Stabilo Woody pencils. These are very, very similar to Neocolor 2 crayons. So they are wax pastels and they dissolve with water, but they have this really nice uh, wooden casing so that they are really easy to hold when you are working on a canvas. They're just a bit thicker and chunkier. So they suit adding marks to a canvas really well. Um, so I, I think I'll be using these mostly on canvas. Um, and then I have my Neocolor 2s, which I love to use on my paper pieces. Uh, but yeah, these are really fun. Let's just add in something. Uh, let's see. So we can use them. You can see here how easy they are to apply and how they do grip to the canvas really well. So there's no pastel medium on this. Um, you know, this canvas is just got acrylic paint on it, but you can already see that this is really gripping and working nicely. So I like how these work and we can also dissolve them in water, which I'll do in a minute. So and we can even spray a bit of water.
So you can see how much the painting is changing. So you can see that I'm just agitating some of those marks with my fingers just to soften things. I do not yet have any idea where this painting is heading. I don't even know what themes are coming through yet. I like to just keep on adding layers until I start to sort of feel something or see something and then I will use that to finish the painting. But I don't want to get ahead of myself. At this point I'm going to add in some of those collage papers and then this will be a good place to just sort of let it simmer, come back in, keep adding and see where it goes. So I have that little brush that I was using earlier and I'll be using that to apply some of these pieces and I'm using the golden soft gel gloss medium to apply the papers. So I like this product on a canvas because it does dry really nice and clear because it is the gloss version. And I can worry about the finish of the overall painting later using a varnish, but I do like the gloss version for that reason. So I've just applied that larger piece and I find it works easier if you do it in sort of half, like you start with one half and then glue that down and then the second half because it is quite a big piece and then sort of push it out from the middle of the shape um, to get it nice and flat. And these brushes are really good for pushing out air bubbles and I put the adhesive under and over just to really seal it in. So that's where I'm going to leave this canvas. I'm very happy because it doesn't look anything like it did before. So now it's in that very transitional stage. I'm not super attached to it, which means I could come in next time with my paint and continue to develop the work and have fun in the process. I've used a lot of supplies and techniques in this video, so I'll leave them linked in the description in case you want to check them out and try them out yourself. So hopefully there's something in there that has got you inspired and itching to go and paint and create.